Good morning, everybody. This is Mike McCarthy from Front Office Sports. I am thrilled to have as our guest today Troy Aikman, the Pro Football Hall of Famer and America's newest brewer. Uh, Troy has launched what has turned out to be the fastest growing independent beer brand in the state of Texas. It's called Eight after his old Dallas Cowboys number. Good morning, Troy. Good morning, Mike. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Troy, why do you think uh, this brand has taken off so fast? I mean, you're now in 50% of the grocery stores in Texas in one year. Well, I think maybe, uh, you know, my recognizability uh, in the state helps. It gives people at least an opportunity to, to know of the beer and give it a try. But I really think the reason that we've grown the way that we have Mike is because we offer something that the other light beers don't and that is we don't we don't have any adjuncts we have no corn rice syrup or sugars that are added to our beer so we're at 90 calories and 2.6 carbs and those measurables are really important to people but I think once they learn our story in that we don't have adjuncts and we don't add a lot of the garbage that other beers do I think it resonates with people because I think at the end of the day people they want what's better for them and there's no question that eight uh, gives them that opportunity and that choice. Yeah. And you've chosen a great lane. You're, you're actually uh, targeting active people, athletes, the people who might drink a light beer or something like that. Talk about that challenge of going up against the big boys. Yeah. Um, well, I will tell you that, that obviously I'm a lifelong athlete and health and wellness has always been important to me. But I do like beer. And I think that part of having a balanced life and part of being healthy and having wellness uh, is also included in bringing people together. And nothing does that better than beer. Uh, so community is obviously a big part of that. And I think for those people that are like myself who do put in the work during the week, and then at the end of a work week enjoy an opportunity to have a moment with friends or family or celebrate life's victories or whatever it might be, that they can have a light beer like eight uh, and feel good about it. So. Uh, I think that now, it, as you mentioned, we are going up against some big boys and it's a very competitive business, as you can imagine. We've got our work cut out for us and we knew that going in. And even though a lot of good things have happened in our first year, we realize and recognize that we've still got a long way to go. Yeah. Troy, I did a little taste test myself over the holidays. I served my family and friend, friends eight and they loved it. And their first question was, when is Troy bringing this to New York and New Jersey? So how would you answer that? <laughs> well, hopefully soon. I, I, you know, when we launched, Mike, we, we felt that Texas is a great beer market uh, and it's a big state. Uh, so our focus has been on Texas, but as, as we have been well received here and we've had other people and a lot of other folks that have reached out and said, hey, when are you coming to this particular state? I, I do think there's a chance, uh, no promises, but I do think there's a chance that we'll be moving outside the state of Texas uh, by year's end, and, and that will mean a lot of good things are happening. And that's, that was our thoughts when we went into this, uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But if we didn't leave the state of Texas and we stayed here, uh, we can have a, a really strong business and feel good about it just being in Texas. Yeah. Not many people know this, but a young Troy Aikman actually worked at a beer distributor when you were in college in Oklahoma. So uh, is Oklahoma the next state that's going to see eight? Well, I, I did. You're right. That was my, my first intro uh, to the beer business. Little did I know that years later I'd be, uh, you know, making my own beer. But there's a good chance that, that when we do leave the state that Oklahoma would be the, the, the next territory for us. It makes sense with my background there. Uh, I, I think that we can cover that state with distributorship uh, that we would feel good about. Uh, and I think it would continue to be well received there. But the response by everyone who's given it a try, like you said, your family and others, uh, we're real excited about that response. Yeah. The last time we talked, you discussed possibly bringing on some investors, a new round of funding. Can you tell us where you're at on that? Well, our, yeah, our first, uh, when we launched, it was just a friends and family. And then we just concluded uh, our second raise a few months ago. And it's given us an opportunity to have some flexibility now. And we're positioned well uh, going forward. We've, we've, we've had a grassroots campaign uh, as a startup company. And, and yet we've been able to reach a lot of people uh, through some of the relationships that I have across the country. 
and some of the activations that we've done. But now we're positioned to where we can be a little bit more aggressive and, and, and maybe do some more con uh, a little bit more conventional advertising as well. Yeah. Speaking of advertising, Troy, can you see the day where there's an eight commercial on the Super Bowl? Possibly starring number eight himself. Uh, yeah, I can, Mike. I mean, that would be exciting um, for me. I've been a part of some commercials over the years that have aired on Super Bowl Sunday. And, it, it, you know, when you're talking about the companies that can afford that kind of advertising, they have definitely arrived. So if one day I can envision it, uh, and if one day we are running on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and hopefully it's a game that I'm calling, uh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to be calling the first two Super Bowls in ESPN history. Before you join them, I've covered the company for a long time. This has been a dream. How does that feel that you and Joe are going to be calling ESPN's first two Super Bowls? Uh, it feels good. I mean, we've, it's amazing that Joe and I, I think we're going into our 23rd year, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it's, it's been quite a ride. I, when I first got into this, uh, I thought I'd do it for a few years and then figure out what I wanted to do with right. myself. And, and here I am, but to be at ESPN, I never, you know, to be at ESPN now and to be calling the Super Bowls when those roll around, uh, is, you know, not many guys that have been in this business have had an opportunity to call Super Bowls, uh, let alone for a couple different networks. So uh, that'll be a, that'll be a big deal to both of us. Yeah. When Jimmy Pertaro brought you and Joe over, I wrote that he got the best NFL announced team in the business. Do you, you do you think that made an impact in the schedule? Because it seemed to me that Monday Night Football had its strongest schedule in years. Yeah, I, I know in talking with people at the league office, they felt that they had given ESPN uh, the, the best Monday night schedule that they had in a long, long time. Uh, unfortunately for us, uh, some of those teams that we anticipated were going to be competitive just weren't. We had the Broncos twice. We had the Colts twice. And, and, and neither of those teams were competitive. And then we had a game when the schedule came out that we thought was going to be a huge uh, game right before Christmas in December with the Packers and the Rams. And the Packers were hanging on by a thread at that time, and the Rams were completely uh, out of the playoff picture. So you never quite know. Uh, the good thing for us here in 2023 is that ESPN is going to have flex scheduling for the first time. And that's always been the challenge. And I'm, I'm curious as to what the mechanics of that will be and what flex scheduling will look like, because it's one thing to go from a Sunday afternoon game to a Sunday night, but we're changing days, going from a Sunday to a Monday night. So that affects a lot of people and the teams also, uh, as well as the fans. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I think it makes sense that, that primetime games should have the best games. And now ESPN will be able to say that going forward. Yeah. Uh, Troy, Tom Brady himself is going to be following in your footsteps at uh, Fox. Any advice for the GOAT as he transitions into broadcasting? You know, just to be himself, uh, I, I have no illusions as to what it might look like for Tom. I think he'll be fantastic. He's been great at everything he's done. Uh, the reason he has been so good is because he puts in the work, and that's the key. I, I, you can fake it for a little bit, uh, and then it catches up to you, and you've got to put in the time. I think the fans deserve that, and Tom will give that to him, and, uh, and I think he's going to be a, a huge success. Uh, I, I know he, he, he's, I'm sure this year, I know he's announced that he's going to start up in 2024. I'm sure he'll use this year uh, to study kind of the mechanics of it, how it works and be as prepared as he can possibly be when he starts. Yeah. Troy, you've talked about possibly running a team someday. When you're done with your TV career, can you see yourself uh, running an NFL team, owning an NFL team? Well, I, I, I can, I'm an optimistic guy, Mike. I could see myself running a team. I don't know if anyone else could. You know, the decision makers that would have to hire me. I, I think that probably at my age, uh, that's probably passed me by. I think a couple of years ago when my daughters both went off to college, that if it was something that I really wanted to pursue, I think I could have done it at that time. I, I think I could right now if I decided that, hey, this is, a, this is a goal of mine. It would mean giving up television in order to do that. And I think right now I'm in a good place with my career. Uh, I really enjoy the people that I work with and, and uh, I'm as happy as I've ever been. So uh, more than likely, that's something that's not going to happen. But I will say, and I've said it all along, that uh, when my days on this earth come to an end or are winding down, if I haven't done that, uh, I'll always wonder. And I wonder right now, Just I think I'd be good 
but you never know unless you do it. So uh, those will always be questions that I'll have for myself as to whether or not I could have done the job that I believe I can. Yeah. What do you think the Cowboys should do with Dak Prescott? Should they stick with him or should they move on? Oh, I'm a big fan of, of, of Dax, and uh, they've got a big contract uh, on him right now. So I think they're going to have to stick with him, and I think that's a good thing because, uh, you know, he has shown over the years his commitment to getting better. He'll continue to put in the time this offseason. Uh, you know, they had a good year, and they've had a lot of good years with Dak. Unfortunately for them, uh, it's just ended in their minds a little bit prematurely, but uh, you keep knocking on the door enough times, eventually you're going to knock it down, and that's their hope. Yeah. Why are we so obsessed with the Cowboys? I mean, when I write about TV ratings, three of the top five games are Cowboy games, four of the top five games are Cowboys. Why do does America love the Cowboys, and why do we tune in for their games so much? You know, it's a, it's, it's a great question. I, I mean, it's a, there's a lot that goes into that, as you know. I, I think it starts really with Tom Landry and Roger Staubach and those great teams of the 70s and being coined America's team. And the Cowboys are just one of those uh, franchises that people, whether you love them or hate them, you want to watch them. Because if you love them, you want to see them win. If you hate them, you want to see them lose. And so they, they draw interest. And I also think that you know, Jerry Jones has done an amazing job. He's a tremendous marketer. He's made the Cowboys relevant, even at times when, when they haven't been that competitive on the football field. So there's a lot to be said for the way that he's approached it, what he's been able to do. Now, with all that being said, I, 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 know, I know the fans, they, they'd say, forget all the interest. Let's go win some Super Bowls. And it's been a long time. So hopefully that day will come as well. Well, Troy, thank you for your time, and congratulations on the one-year anniversary of eight. Uh, if you haven't tasted it yet, that beer might be coming to a state near you pretty soon. Troy Aikman, thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs>